Hey guys, welcome to our uh, species spotlight on the betta, or otherwise commonly known as the Siamese fighting fish, the betta splendens. Now, this fish originated uh, really in several different southeastern countries, uh, namely Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, uh, in principle. Now, the original importations uh, to the USA uh, took place in 1927. That's when the original importations of Betta splendens first started coming in. Uh, it has since then become a very domesticated uh, aquarium tropical fish, shall we say, and it's available in a wide variety of different colors, fin shapes. Uh, there's just a huge variety of Betta splendens. It's become quite, uh, quite a group of fish, in fact. Now, something else important about the origins of this species is that as far back as the 1800s, uh, Betta competitions, fighting competitions, existed in, uh, in Southeast Asia. So there's a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot of development as Betta splendens evolved during its initial phases uh, for males to be very, very aggressive towards one, so one another. They were, in fact, uh, used in, in fighting competitions. So the fish at its core really is a, an aggressive species, especially male to male. Now let's talk a little bit about behavior, size, compatibility, uh, you know, temperament, tank uh, setup, ideal tanks uh, setup. Now, as we were mentioning in the origins about the nature of uh, Betta splendens, uh, in fact, this makes it not probably one of the best community fish that you could select. You know, in general, a single male Betta, due to its aggressive nature, is really best off kept with some live plants, correct water temperature and water conditions. Um, and really uh, to, to enjoy its, its spectacular finish, especially the long fin varieties, you know, the double tails, uh, the delta tails, the half moons, the rose tails, etc. cetera. Uh, if you keep them in a tank with a lot of other fish, especially you shouldn't be keeping with fast moving species, they tend to get fin nipped and so forth. They'll never really be in perfect condition. This is usually the case. Uh, you do get some that of course, are a little bit more compatible with with other fish, but in general, it's not the case. Uh, you'd be better off really with a shorter fin, uh, better for a community type selection, and then still pay attention to its tank mates, or a female better, even though some of them can be highly aggressive as well. Chances are you would have better success with selecting a female for that. Um, now, today's better splendens, as we mentioned before, are available in a wide variety of different color patterns. You can have a couple of color combinations. You can have multi-color combinations, variegated. Uh, the fin types are, are enormous. You have crown tails, double tails, half moons, uh, super deltas, and on and on and on. I mean, there's, there's a really a lot of different varieties of bettas. There's usually something that, uh, that will interest somebody when it comes to keeping a betta. So, I mean, when it comes to lighting conditions and you know, what you should select for your betta. You want a, a more subdued kind of lighting. You definitely don't want to keep them under bright lighting. Uh, planted aquarium is really best. Uh, we suggest the use of, um, you know, tropical siaman leaves or terminalia catapa uh, in its dried state. It releases a lot of beneficial compounds. The leaf is found in natural originating environments for the betta in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's highly recommended. It will, it will, the betta will display its best color. Uh, the, the comportment and the health of the fish is benefited by its use as well. We highly recommend it. You know, on top of that, you would also like to maintain probably little bits of Malaysian driftwood, live plants. That's the type of setup that uh, really best houses a, uh, a bed of splendens. Now, if you are going to maintain tank mates for, uh, for a male betta, then you really should select um, peaceful species like some corridors, catfish for the bottom of the tank, maybe some tetras. Although we have heard of incidents, you know, smaller peaceful tetras often work out fine. And then sometimes uh, there are incidents where a male betta will chase them relentlessly. It's a case by case betta, uh, a case by case situation. In that case, you would have to isolate the male uh, if that's the way it works out, that it's, it's a very aggressive fish. Uh, the size male bettas can get up to about three inches or so, maybe a little bit more. Then you have giant bettas, which could get which could get up to four or five inches. Uh, and female bettas typically are somewhere in the range of two to two and a half inches as a maximum size. 
Now let's talk a bit about water conditions. Um, Typically you want to uh, maintain them in somewhat acidic water, uh, that is best, it is an anabantoid based on its origins, it does prefer that. Somewhere between 6.5 to 7.4 is a pH is really ideal, close to neutral is really best, slight on, slightly on the acidic side. Uh, moderately soft to, uh, soft to moderately soft water is best, something between two degrees carbonate hardness to about six or seven degrees carbonate hardness. It's not that better, better as especially domesticated, uh, you know, varieties of betta splenins are really that sensitive to that, but it does tend to provide them with their best comportment and so forth when you can maintain them in an ideal pH and somewhat softer water is also much more natural to them as well. Uh, when it comes to lighting, uh, as we mentioned before, in tank conditions and so forth, you, you want to maintain them in a more subdued light, uh, not a high powered uh, lighting system. Floating plants are a great addition to uh, providing them with the light conditions that they require. And, uh, you know, staining the water with something like sealman, tropical sealman leaves or little bits of driftwood as part of the tank decor. Um, pine cones as well are, uh, are, are very, very good. The miniature pine cones that you can find. Uh, those are very, very good for, uh, for staining water and providing bettas with a more natural type of habitat. Peat, of course, granulated peat uh, is uh, very effective at doing that as well. Provides them with some of the tannins they naturally need and so forth as well. Now, when it comes to feeding, it's important to remember that bettas have a very small stomach. Uh, they have an upturned mouth, which means that they like to feed at the surface. Typically in the wild, it would be on something like insect larvae that they would find at the surface. Um, <clears throat> they're definitely more on the carnivorous side. It's not the type of anabantoid that's going to actively feed or really relish feeding on any algae matter. So you could call it much more of a carnivore like a, a micro predator, uh, it definitely prefers small uh, invertebrates and that kind of uh, food source as well as insect larvae uh, in the wild. So when it comes to the diet, uh, make sure given the small stomach that you feed it a couple times a day and give it very small amounts of food, so the amount that it will consume readily in about 30 seconds or so. Uh, and that would be a much more natural way for a betta to feed. Make sure there's some variety given in its diet, you know, good staple food that uh, like in a, in a small floating pellet that is comprised of a lot of insect protein such as uh, uh, bug bites, betta formula, that is a very good one to, uh, to feed as a regular daily diet given the high percentage of black soldier fly larva as an insect protein source. Um, and on top of that, you want to mix in some feedings of uh, frozen foods, brine shrimp, mices, chopped up mices, blood worms, black worms. There's a whole variety of different frozen foods that they'll readily take. Mixing a little bit of that in uh, a couple times a week is a good idea as well. Freeze dried, you got to be careful with because of their small uh, stomachs. You want to feed that very, very sparingly. It's good to feed, but very small amounts when you do feed it. Um, and, you know, coming back to the uh, mixability or how good a community fish bettas really are, uh, it, you know, male bettas are, are slower moving fish. They are not really, especially the ones with the big gaudy finnage that we all love to marvel over, they're not a fast moving fish. So they don't compete well with a lot of other fish for food. And um, for that reason, uh, you know, you, you really want to consider keeping them on their own. They're easier to feed that way. You can control it a lot better. So in summary, I mean, it's really no surprise that uh, the Betta Splendens it has achieved the popularity it, it has, being one of the most popular tropical uh, aquarium fish that's, that's kept by so many different types of aquarists, be it beginners or really seasoned uh, hobbyists as well. Given the wide variety of uh, fin shapes and colors, uh, there's really so much to choose from. You're bound to stumble on something that you really like. It's also, also highly pleasurable to, to uh, have a single male betta that has perfect finish with stunning colors and a little aquascape set of a planted setup that you have on your desk. It's easy to set up and maintain. They're obviously a great plant-friendly fish. 
it's really interesting to watch a male build its bubble nests and as a typical smaller anabantid it likes to move about the tank with a kind of a sense of purpose it's it's a very enjoyable single centerpiece fish to set up in a small planted aquarium and of course the more strictly you follow the water conditions lighting conditions and the water chemistry and the diet that that a, that a betta prefers uh, you're going to be rewarded with a really well conditioned fish that's going to give you years of of enjoyment uh, enjoying them you know their lifespan typically is somewhere in the range of three to five years for a male betta typically speaking some could go a little bit longer I'm sure um, it's really should be all about the providing it with those perfect conditions to bring out its full beauty and really reward you with, uh, with uh, a lovely fish that you can enjoy a small planted tank with. The betta is really an interesting species of fish. Uh, it's fun to spawn as well. The reproduction aspect of uh, breeding betta splendens is really not that difficult. In fact, your biggest challenge uh, will be, once you've successfully spawned a pair, is to be prepared to deal with all the fry. They can have up to a few hundred fry that you're going to have to raise and that in itself is quite a challenge feeding them and providing them with the room and then splitting up all the males after is really uh, somewhat of a challenge you got to be prepared for it. So there you go, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure to like, comment and subscribe below and make sure you try a bed of Splendens if you haven't already kept one. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you.